Hey there, hi there, and ho there. My name is Michael. I'm a former bartender from the Kalamazoo area, and today I'm going to be moving on to day 10 of 25 Drinks of Christmas here on Mike's Hard Reviews. This episode is coming at a slightly lower energy and a, uh, a slightly later time because I just returned from a uh, business luncheon for uh, my office's Christmas party, and I am admittedly a little sauced. We're going to make a variation on an old-fashioned today uh, based on something that I had at my Christmas party as a way to raise the toast to the people I work with at Advanced Health Pharmacy. Sort of as a way to honor them, I've decided that I want to raise a glass to them, not just there at the luncheon, but here now uh, in memoriam so that they know how much they mean to me as is the point of really any good Christmas celebration when you think about it. <laughs> so this is a variation on an old fashioned. What is an old fashioned? An old fashioned is a very old cocktail, although not as old as others. That sort of is a quote unquote return to form of the method of rectifying poorly produced or poor quality spirits into something more drinkable. Additionally, uh, an old fashioned features two ounces of bourbon or traditionally, more traditionally rye whiskey um, with some syrup or sugar, uh, bitters, typically aromatic bitters, or uh, as is common nowadays, Angostura bitters, and then uh, citrus peel, and occasionally cherries. Now today, instead, we're going to make a variation on an old fashioned from the Latitude 42 bar here, uh, bar and distillery, and also brewery, actually, in uh, Michigan. I don't know if they make it out of Michigan, actually, as far as I know they don't, but they're pretty prominent in my area, and they make some delicious spirits, let me tell you. Go into the uh, the Weird Old Days playlist on this channel, you'll find a review for Latitude 42 Bourbon, which I am a huge fan of to this day, as evidenced by how, uh, frankly, inebriated I am at this point. We're gonna get started with our stirring glass. An Old Fashioned is a stirred cocktail, uh, and in this case, we're gonna go ahead and make a variation that introduces flavors of apple and cinnamon to, to sort of make it kind of reminiscent of a bourbon-based mulled wine, almost, but in a single serving portion, obviously. You'll need everything you see in front of you here. Uh, that includes some simple syrup, Angostura bitters, or a preferred bitters of your type, except for Peychaud's. Peychaud's makes this more along the lines of a uh, uh, Sazerac, which is a different flavor palette than what we're looking for. Some bourbon, you're gonna want to go for a decent bourbon. I unfortunately don't have any from Latitude 42 here in the house with me, but I do have this Evan Williams bottled and bond, which I am partial to. You'll also need some apple juice, uh, a small, very small amount of lime juice, an apple, and then a cherry for garnishes. I'm actually going to start with uh, something I forgot to mention. Uh, we need some cinnamon. Now, I would advise that when you make this at home, you make a cinnamon simple syrup. Um, a simple syrup that you have steeped either some uh, grated powder or whole sticks of cinnamon into and allowed to flavor the syrup. Unfortunately, I don't have any ready with me at the moment and I have no bottles to store it in. So we're going to be using instead some ground cinnamon uh, along with the rest of our ingredients. And I'm going to start by adding this to our shaking cup. Shaking cup? Storing cup <laughs> uh, to allow it to sort of infuse those flavors into the cocktail as we make it and allow it to sit there and steep, even if only briefly, just to get that flavor into the cocktail. Next up, I'm gonna do a, just a third of an ounce is usually what I go for, for uh, old fashions. You don't need a ton. Uh, anything more than that, I found, makes them sort of candy sweet, and that's not really what an old fashioned should be. Next up, I'm actually gonna do the bitters here, just to give them a chance to help dissolve some of that sugar and give the cinnamon something to steep into. You want two dashes, two firm dashes at that. I'm going to introduce some apple juice. This is the same 100% organic apple juice that I used with the Red Apple Cosmo, which by the way, um, this is one of the few episodes I'm filming um, after having had some time to look at how the episodes are doing. I appreciate every single one of you who is out there liking and watching and enjoying the videos. It really does make me happy that you guys are involved. You know, I see you guys watching. I see people leaving likes. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Finally, uh, well, almost finally rather, we're going to do uh, two ounces of bourbon. <laughs> my, my kitty cat is, is roaming around the set <laughs> as I make this. She hates, she hates what I'm doing this. I make so much noise, but she's, yeah, I hear you. 
I sort of finish this off. Um, you do need a citrus element to an old fashioned. Usually that's in the form of a citrus peel uh, of some kind, typically orange or lemon. However, here I'm actually going to take some lime, which I think pairs better with the flavors of cinnamon and apple. And I'm not going to do like a peel, but I am going to give this half of a lime just a gentle squeeze in here. Just, just enough to add just a little bit here. And that will help pull us away from some of that sweetness we're adding while also giving the, the apple and the cinnamon a base to work off of, some brightness, some much needed citric acid, uh, in a context where typically there wouldn't be any and the whole flavor would fall kind of flat. Much like with every other cocktail we've made on the show, we're gonna go ahead and add some ice and this cake. Excuse you. And in this case, stir it. Now because we're stirring this one, both cubes are actually going to go in cracked and that's going to provide us uh, more dilution, which we would otherwise not get because we're not doing the action of shaking. Shaking is much more rigorous. It releases a lot more chilling and dilution than stirring does. We want some added surface area to compensate for the lack of agitation we're introducing. Once we've got everything in there, we're gonna go ahead and give this a stir for about 15 seconds, just to get it chilled and properly diluted. The thing I look for is that the ice will loosen up and it will become easier to stir. It's more, you know, you can, you kind of, there's a physical feel for it. It's not easy to explain verbally. Now, once we've gotten that all properly stirred up, we're gonna go ahead and take out a Hawthorne strainer, which mine was actually waiting to be cleaned. I had forgotten that I used it previously. Uh, and we're going to strain this into a rocks glass with a large cube of ice, or at the very least, a lot of very small ice. It old fashioned is really made by allowing it to sit at relatively high proof and be a sipping drink. So you don't want to sit it on more than one large cube of ice, ideally, because what one large cube of ice does is provide consistent chilling without a lot of dilution because of its limited surface area. You know, physics. That thing we all hated in high school and even today. Regardless of how much you hate physics, go ahead and put that straightener over there and just pour that straight into the poop. Now, you wanna be kinda of careful here and get a nice firm grip on this because there will be, in this case, some powdered cinnamon that will that is likely to come through. Um, I'm putting a lot of downward pressure on here to try and catch that towards the end of the pour, and it's definitely still falling in there. So that will continue to steep and flavor the cocktail as we drink, but honestly, that's not a bad thing. To sort of finish this off, we need to create a garnish, and in this case, I've got that apple for it. We're gonna cut off a coin of the apple and then create, much like we did with the red apple Cosmo, a couple of thin strips through which we can cut. We'll take those wedges and sort of feather them like so and place a single uniform cut between all three of them while they are stacked on top of one another. What we'll do then is place each of these, either individually as I am because I lost my grip on them, uh, or collectively as one unit. That one sucked. We're going to place these on the rim of the glass. These are, no, okay, hold on. <laughs> you know what? Screw it. It's an old fashioned. Take a wedge of apple. Rest it on the ice. There you go. Nice and easy. And if you're like me and you're partial to cocktail cherries, you can kind of skip this step if you aren't, but I'm gonna fish one out and just kind of toss that after straining off some of the syrup directly into the glass. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call an apple cinnamon old fashioned. Let's go ahead and give that a taste. That is quite good and good in a different way than the one that I had at Latitude 42. This one features the bourbon way more heavily. It's a lot less sweet. And it feels a lot less diluted, actually. A lot more like a proper old fashioned where there's really not a lot going into it. It's just rectified booze. And that kind of heat gives the cinnamon almost this kind of dominance amongst it. And the apple, more of a gentle backdrop. If you wanted to make it more sweet, you can obviously go up to, I would say, no more than half an ounce of simple syrup, and then maybe introduce some more apple juice as well. Um, that might make it a bit more accessible to people, and in general, something a bit more approachable. Um, but no, that's quite good. It's much more rustic than you would expect, actually. I wouldn't quite describe a regular old fashioned as rustic, but in this case, the flavors don't feel as rounded. They feel a lot more rough and tumble, um, and, and sort of in your face. And I like it. I like that a lot, actually. And of course, 
as it sits, those flavors sort of mellow and come together and you get the essence of, of the, um, the cinnamon and, and the apple and that kind of playing off of the bourbon. You don't really taste lime though. That's the one thing to know. You don't taste lime. It's really there to just give it this kind of brightness behind everything. And if anything, introduce just a little bit more bitterness because I mean, limes are so tart, they tend to read as bitter rather than sour. So it works. It's very basic, admittedly, but it really does work. Well, that ladies and gentlemen is an, of course, right as the, right as I'm doing the outro, the camera stops. Of course, of course, that, that makes fucking perfect sense. Well, as I was saying, that is the apple cinnamon old fashioned. Hopefully you guys enjoy it at home. Definitely do it with a cinnamon simple syrup. I can't stress that enough. Whether you buy a store-bought one like Monin or uh, if you were to make your own, which just, you know, do two cups sugar, one cup water, a couple sticks of cinnamon and use cinnamon sticks. They're gonna be a lot more prominent in their flavor than ground cinnamon and also easier to strain out. Um, you're gonna get a much better, much, much better, more sweet, more rounded, approachable cocktail that you can enjoy at home this Christmas. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed day 10 of 25 Drinks for Christmas, click that like button down below. And before we go, I'd like to raise a toast to Mr. Arun Tandon and the people of Advanced Health Pharmacy, without whom I don't think I would be the same person I am here today. Merry Christmas to every single one of you. And I can't wait to see you guys on Monday. Have a good night.